I like to eat at PF Chang's, but I believe that the median sodium content of their dishes is higher than 2300 milligrams, the recommended daily sodium intake for a normal person. Below I have included the sodium content for a random selection of 10 dinner entrees served at PF Chang's. Use the sign test to test my claim at the 1% significance level. Okay, so it's clear that we're dealing with the sign test because it tells us that explicitly. And also another clue is that they mentioned that we're talking about the median being higher than 2300 milligrams, right? So of course the sign test though is the biggest clue that we're working with the sign test. Every time we work with the median, it does not mean we're working always with the sign test, but certainly the mention of the median indicates a non-parametric procedure. Specifically in this case, we're going to do the sign test, which is the specific non-parametric procedure they want us to use. Okay, so I have some data, I have a 1% significance level, I have my claim, I think we're ready to start. So let's go ahead and write down the claim for the problem here. All right, so reading just the information here in the problem, it says that I believe that the median sodium content, so my claim of course will be about eta, the median, it says it's higher than, that's greater than 2300. So that's my value. Now from there I'll come up with HO and HA. Now looking at the symbol here, greater than, I know that HA and the claim are the same, so I'll let this be eta is greater than 2300, and of course HO has to express the opposite idea or the complement, so we'll say less than or equal to 2300. All right, very good. Now from there, what we want to do is to talk about the sample size and alpha, right? Well, I can see alpha is 1%. That's very clear, right? Alpha is 1%. As far as the sample size goes, it says we have 10 dinner entrees, so n is probably 10, but I want to check to make sure that I don't have any ties before I go ahead and just say that it's 10. So let's do that. Let's check to see if there are any ties present. So when I look at the actual data, I don't see any 2300s, so there are no ties. So in that case, I will say n is the actual 10 values that we started with, right? I don't have to throw out any values because there are no ties here. All right, very good. Now from there, once I have that, the next step is going to be to come up with our test statistic. Now, to come up with our test statistic, we have to recognize that this is a one-tailed procedure at this point, right? Because we have HA is greater than. In the other videos we looked at, we did two-tailed procedures. So let me just put this up here for you. Um, it is a description of how you get the test statistic when working problems in the sign test or using the sign test, right? Okay, so for a two-tailed test, we saw in those other videos that our test stat is S max, right? Which is the maximum of the smaller and S bigger. So remember what S smaller was. It was the number of values smaller than the um, N naught value. Now N naught is the value found in HO. So in this case, S smaller is the number of values smaller than this value. S bigger is the number of values bigger than that value. And of course, for the test stat, then we take the bigger of those two numbers, whatever that turns out to be, right? Okay, now for the left tail test, we have S equals the number of values less than this value, which makes sense because when we think of left tail, don't we think of a less than symbol? I think we do, right? And when you think of right tailed, you tend to think of a right tailed symbol. So that's pretty much routine. And for the right tail test, S is going to be the number of values greater than N naught or A to naught, right? A to naught. So in this case, we have a right tail test, right? Because our symbol is greater than. So S is going to be the number of values greater than A to naught. So let's try to remember that and keep that in mind. Okay. So for our test, let's go back to our procedure. We're going to say that S is equal to the number of values greater than 2300. All right, that's our test stat. Okay, well let's figure that out. How many values in our table are greater than 2300 milligrams? Well, it's certainly that one. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, that one's not. That one's not. That one is eight. We have eight values out of 10, right? So S is equal to eight. So our answer for our test stat then is eight. S is eight. There are eight values that are bigger than 2300. So the 10 dishes sampled, eight of them are higher than 2300. Okay, so there's our test stat. Remember how we get our p-value now. Our p-value is going to be equal to the probability, 
that x is greater than or equal to s. Now in the previous videos you saw we had a 2 in front, but that was because of the two-tailed test. When it's only a one-tailed test, you just do the probability that x is greater than or equal to s. That's all you can do. You don't have to worry about the 2 out in front. Okay, now in our case this is going to be the probability that x is greater than or equal to 8. And remember x is a binomial random variable that has n equals 10 as its number of trials. The probability is 50. In other words, because we say it's a 50% chance that a value will be greater than 2300 if the median really was equal to 2300, let's say, right? And then lastly, you know, um, we go to the table and we have to look up a number, and the number in the table is either called k or c typically in most tables, either k or c, depending on what they use. But either way, we're going to be looking up this number, but we have to be careful because our tables don't read this way. They don't do greater than or equal to values. Our binomial tables usually go and do less than or equal to. So we have to convert this to a statement that says less than or equal to. The way we're going to do that is to say that this is equivalent to 1 minus the probability of x being less than or equal to one number less than that. So we're going to make it 7. So that's just the pattern, right? If you want to do this greater than or equal to problem using the binomial table, you have to do 1 minus the probability that x is less than or equal to this number minus 1. Again, we had a bunch of videos that explained that technique earlier on, so just look for the videos on using the binomial table. Okay, from there, once we have that, we're going to have to go to our table. We're going to look up 7 under n equals 10 and p equals 0.5. All right, so let's go to our table and do that now, and we'll get our answer for our p-value. Okay, so we're on the binomial table where n is 10. We're going to come down to where k is 7 and then over to where p is 0.5. And when we do that, we find the answer 0 0.945. 0 0.945. Okay, so we found our answer to be 0.945. So it'll be 1 minus 0 0.945. All right, and when you take the difference of these, of course, you're going to get the answer 0 0.055, right? So 5.5% turns out to be our p-value. Let's try to understand what this is representing here. Our p-value is saying that the probability that we would have the number of values that are greater than 2,300, right, be greater than or equal to 8 is about 5.5% if the real median were equal to, say, 2,300. So if the real median were equal to 2300, remember when we do the test, we assume the equality part of HO is true. So we say this is the probability that given that the median were, be, were to be 2300, the probability we would end up getting out of 10 dishes eight or more that are um, have a sodium content higher than 2300. That probability is about 5.5% of the time, which means the other 95%, roughly, right, almost 95% of the time, it would go the other way, that we would have less of the dishes, right, be that high in sodium, uh, given the fact that we're, you know, assuming that it's 2300, the, the percent of, or the amount of sodium, the median amount of sodium in these dishes. So it seems like this is, you know, should be enough to reject the null hypothesis, but then when we look at alpha, we see that, hmm, no, it's 1% alpha. So what we're going to say here is that since the p-value is uh, greater than alpha, right, which is only 1%, right, and the p-value is 5.5%, um, we do not reject HO. We do not reject HO. And therefore, we do not support HA. So we do not support the claim. It seems wrong though, right? It seems like, my goodness, eight of the ten dishes had sodium content that was higher than 2300, and look, some of these are much higher than 2300, right? So you say, geez, you know, it seems like if we were ever going to be able to reject the HO with a sign test, it would have been now. But um, that's not where our conclusion turns out to be. So remember that we might be thinking to ourselves that uh, you know, I'm highlighting this one because our claim is HA, so of course we're going to say do not support the claim. The sample data does not support the claim. But in reality, I feel like we've been cheated because this number 
um, is pretty high. Out of 10 dishes, eight of them are higher than 2300, yet we're still not able to reject the null hypothesis that it's equal to 2300, and we're not able to support the idea that it's greater than 2300. It seems wrong. But we didn't do anything wrong. It just is a reflection of the fact that the sign test is a very weak procedure, right? It's a very weak procedure. And a weak procedure has a difficult time rejecting HO. So we often come to the conclusion with weak procedures that we do not reject HO which means that perhaps maybe we should think about using a more powerful test. But either way, let's go ahead and express our, our final conclusion here, which is basically that the sample data, the sample data does not support the claim. Dot, dot, dot. You know, here I would probably want to add in the sample data does not support the claim at the 1% significance level. Of course, at a 10% significance level, it would support the claim because then what? We'd have a p-value that was less than alpha. So if alpha was 10%, we would have been able to reject HO. But the fact that it's 1%, we weren't able to. So either way, not very happy with the result, but we did it correctly. And so, you know, that's it. That's the end of the problem.